The first time most of us laid our eyes on Rhea Ripley was probably in 2017 during the inaugural Mae Young Classic. She'd been active since 2013, mainly working in Riot City Wrestling, an independent promotion in her home country of Australia. The 20-year-old prospect would win her first round match against Miranda Salinas. However, with a double foot stomp, Dakota Kai would eliminate the Australian from the tournament in round two. Be that as it may, the statuesque blonde bombshell made her impression with fans. Based on aesthetic appeal alone, people saw a young woman who could be molded into a bona fide WWE superstar, although I'm sure no one at the time could foresee just how big of a deal she'd become. So today, let's take a look at Rhea Ripley's WWE career, her ups, her downs, and everything in between. On the October 25, 2017 airing of NXT, Rhea participates in a battle royal. She doesn't do much before being eliminated. In fact, a she stays off television working NXT live events getting her reps in. We don't see her again until the 2018 Mae Young Classic. Ripley starts looking a little more familiar at this point. Going through MJ Jenkins, Casey Catanzaro, and Tegan Knox, who's legitimately injured, Rhea falls in the semi-final to Io Shirai. The next tournament she's in will be a little different. Rhea Ripley ends up on the NXT UK brand while still working NXT live events in the States. That's a lot of travel. It's there that she participates in a tournament to crown the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion. Ripley gets past Isaiah Brookside and Dakota Kai before advancing to the final where she faces Tony Storm. In an interview, Ripley says that she wasn't meant to get to that point, but plans kept changing. Add to it that Tony Storm gets injured, and there you have it. Rhea Ripley, the inaugural NXT UK Women's Champion. Ripley keeps the belt warm for the remainder of 2018, but as she goes into the new year, a healthy Tony Storm takes what was meant to be hers to begin with, the NXT UK Women's Championship. Rhea does get a rematch, but I have to say it, it's Tony time. What's next for Ripley is the chance to be seen on a huge stage at the Royal Rumble. Entering at number 24, she has a good, albeit brief, showing. Eliminating Casey Catanzaro, Dana Brooke, and Zelina Vega. Entrant number 27, Bailey makes quick work of her, though. Rhea continues her NXT UK run looking pretty strong, picking up wins over Zaya Brookside and Casey Catanzaro. There's an opportunity to become a title contender again in winning a battle royal, but the former Piper Niven stands in Ripley's way. When they clash, Zaya Brookside takes advantage, ensuring neither woman is victorious. Niven and Ripley go on to settle this one-on-one. -on -one. In the end, a big strong woman loses to someone bigger and stronger. Rhea Ripley makes an NXT appearance, taking on the NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler. Even though this ends in a disqualification, the match isn't inconsequential. This lays some groundwork for later on. First, Ripley finishes her NXT UK run up. She gets her win over Piper Niven and even tags with her. There are some enhancement matches too, but the time to become an NXT regular is at hand. She comes in strong with some easy wins over Caden Carter and Aaliyah. To my surprise, she even gets it's a victory over Bianca Belair. If you think that's something, how about wrestling the Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch to a standstill until Shayna Baszler, Marina Shafir, and Jessamyn Duke cause a disqualification? Even better is that Ripley gets a smart pin over Charlotte in a triple threat match involving Sasha Banks on SmackDown. Yeah, it's pretty clear that the powers that be see big things in Rhea Ripley at this point. At NXT TakeOver War Games, Team Ripley and Team Baszler clash. After a riptide on a steel chairs, Rhea pins Shayna Baszler to win the match for her team. The very next night, Ripley competes at Survivor Series, Team NXT vs. Team Raw vs. Team SmackDown, and Ripley's tagging with women who were just her opponents. The match comes down to Sasha Banks and Rhea. These two have one hell of a final stretch. Candice LeRae and Io Shirai were taken to the back earlier due to injury. It was all a ruse, they're fine. They show up to assist Rhea in getting the win. While not a clean victory, all that matters is Ripley pinning Sasha Banks, a huge win for the NXT superstar. And fans are into her. It can't be any more obvious that Rhea Ripley is the future of the women's division. It's been a good year for Ripley, wouldn't you say? There's something that would be perfect to end 2019. Championship gold. The woman they call the Submission Magician won't go quietly into that good night. Isolating Ripley's wrist and hand, the champion is as vicious as ever. Oh sure, Ripley hits the riptide, but the referee's down. Baszler 
takes the opportunity to DDT the challenger on a chair Ripley survives and fans love it. The Rhea chants break out. They can feel that tonight will be huge for her. When Shayna locks in the Kira Fuda clutch, some people go silent. The energy returns as she powers out, though. Shayna tries asserting her dominance before it all comes crashing down with a super riptide. Rhea Ripley is the new NXT Women's Champion. Going into 2020, Ripley's future looks brighter than ever. What could go wrong? Well, okay, 2020 sucked for everyone. Beyond that... Well, never mind, we'll get to that in a second. Rhea doesn't allow history to repeat itself as she successfully defends the NXT women's title against Tony Storm. Destroying Sarah Logan on Raw in under 40 seconds is a great way to showcase her to the masses. At NXT TakeOver Portland, it's Ripley vs. Bianca with the NXT women's title up for grabs. As much love as Rhea has been getting, the crowd is split 50-50. I mean, when talking about the future of the women's division, Bianca is right up there with Rhea. I love Belair's reaction to getting slapped, by the way. The audacity. An exchange of slaps ensues until Bel Air shuts Ripley down with a hair whip. Mauro Ranallo is so good on commentary with, beware the hair of Bianca Belair. And of course he follows it up with, my god, I missed that man. Ripley wins with Riptide after an incredible performance from both women. So up next is the Queen, WrestleMania 36 Night 2. Rhea Ripley's NXT Women's Championship is in jeopardy. The challenger takes the champ lightly, for that she eats a Riptide only minutes into the match. Charlotte kicks out, but Rhea remains looking big, powerful, and dominant. Charlotte's in-ring IQ is what keeps her alive as she targets the champ's knee. This foreshadows the finish. Even though Ripley puts up a good fight, she ultimately taps out to the figure eight. There are no fans at this point, the pandemic has people at home. I can assure you, if a live crowd were present, this outcome would be met with a chorus of boos. This results in Charlotte defending the NXT Women's title against Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley in a triple threat match. Io pins Ripley and becomes the new NXT Women's Champion. In a fightful interview, Rhea mentions how this all made her lose confidence in herself because she wasn't being portrayed in the same way. Ripley licks her wounds and carries on. She defeats Aaliyah and Robert Stone in a handicap match. When it comes to reclaiming the NXT women's title, she has to get past Dakota Kai in a number one contenders match. Mercedes Martinez robs Rhea of the opportunity and gives her a good trashing afterward. The two do combat within a steel cage. A riptide through a table is what's needed to move past this. Back to the title hunt. A battle royal will give the winner a shot at Io Shirai. Raquel Gonzalez proves too big an obstacle to roll over. Rhea and Gonzalez eliminate each other. So begins Raquel becoming Rhea's next rival. The inevitable wrestling match gets one point across. Raquel's bigger and stronger. Ripley scales the uphill challenge and proves superiority for now. Ripley rides this wave of momentum straight toward Io Shirai and the NXT Women's Championship. Still trying to wash off the stench of defeat lingering from WrestleMania, this is a must-win match for Rhea. Champion and challenger fight with vigor and honor. No funny business. By handicapping Ripley, taking away her left arm, there is a limitation in performing a quick and powerful riptide. This gets turned into an armbar, furthering the challenger's disadvantage. A second riptide attempt is beautifully countered. Ripley recovers from a powerbomb through the announce desk, only to climb into the ring and immediately get hit with a moonsault. A great match ends. Rhea just couldn't reclaim the top spot in the NXT women's division. Next up is War Games. Rhea and Gonzalez go at it again because things aren't yet set. Gonzalez is such a force to be reckoned with that she wins the match by pinning the NXT Women's Champion. With tensions from War Games bleeding over, there's another match with Tony Storm. Is it Tony time again? Well, if Raquel Gonzalez has anything to say about it, yes it is. Rhea eats another loss while Gonzalez admires her handiwork from the rampway. Rhea and Dakota Kai wrestle. The story here is that Raquel said she'd stay out of this for the fact that Kai doesn't require assistance in obtaining victory. Raquel does keep watch 
much, but doesn't interfere. After ending Dakota Kai with a riptide, Gonzalez and Ripley collide with officials, barely maintaining control. Raquel welcomes Ripley into the new year with a last woman standing match. Gonzalez manhandles Ripley even more effectively than the last time they wrestled. Handcuffing Raquel isn't even effective, for she frees herself with brute strength. Rhea's adversary proves to be a monster, one that won't be stopped. Even after driving Raquel through glass and forcing her through a table, Rhea can't keep Gonzalez down. Dakota Kai makes a nuisance of herself. She receives good old-fashioned nerd treatment, getting trapped in a locker. Kai isn't a factor in the finish. Raquel and Rhea go through the stage, but Rhea doesn't come out. She loses. A win so big for Gonzalez that she ends Rhea's NXT run. That's right. Rhea isn't seen again until the Royal Rumble. Entering at number 14, a new chapter begins. She eliminates Tony Storm, Santana Garrett, Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose, Dakota Kai, and Alexa Bliss. Rhea and Bianca join forces to eliminate Charlotte. Hey, the Queen can't win them all. This leaves just Rhea and Bianca to battle it out. With Rhea having two singles victories over her, Bianca gets a cathartic Rumble win. I can honestly envision these two main eventing WrestleMania someday. In March of 2021, Rhea becomes part of the Raw brand and guns straight toward the Raw Women's Champion Asuka. First, they tag together against the women's tag team champions Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Rhea turns on Asuka during the match, affording Baszler a victory over her. I'm not sure why the Raw Women's Champion is getting pinned right before WrestleMania, but this is indicative of Asuka's main roster run, so I won't pretend to be shocked. On the second night of WrestleMania 37, Ripley gets her opportunity to dethrone the Empress of Tomorrow for the Raw Women's Championship. It's a game of power versus speed. It doesn't take long for the challenger to physically overwhelm her smaller opponent, but Asuka's strikes can send anyone crumbling to the mat. Asuka's DDT to Ripley onto the floor looks especially devastating. Rhea endures Asuka's strikes, suckers are in, and boom, Riptide. Rhea Ripley is the new new Raw Women's Champion. It won't be smooth sailing from here though. The very next night on Raw, the two have a rematch and look who gets involved, causing a disqualification. The woman who halted Ripley's momentum last year is once again inserting herself into the title picture. What comes around goes around. Charlotte and Asuka wrestle one on one. Ripley involves herself, leading to Asuka's victory with a quick pin. Charlotte gives in to unruly behavior, assaulting the referee. Rhea Ripley faces Asuka again to pick up another win before WrestleMania Backlash. At the event, Ripley defends her championship against both Asuka and Charlotte. Asuka is really here to be a buffer because this match serves one purpose, to build toward the Queen and the Raw Women's Champion's eventual one-on-one -on -one showdown. Asuka eats the pin and that's that. The next night on Raw, it's Asuka versus Charlotte. A Ripley distraction lends itself to an Asuka victory. Rhea ends up taking on Nikki Cross, it's a two minute beat the clock challenge. Well, Nikki survives the two minutes. It's a win over the champ. Well, surely Charlotte can beat Nikki in two minutes? Nope. Little Nikki is able to last the two minutes, giving her another win. I can't tell if Nikki's inclusion into this feud is charming or obnoxious. For better or worse, there's a payoff down the road. The Queen and the Raw Women's Champion tag together against Nikki Cross and Asuka. Charlotte and Ripley end up going at each other. Who could have seen that coming? Yeah, and Nikki pins the Raw Women's Champion. This whole Mikey Whipwreck thing carries on. Charlotte loses to Nikki by countout thanks to jawjacking with Rhea on the outside. After another triumph over Asuka, Charlotte goes on the attack. Officials have to separate the women and there you have it. The stage is set for these two to tear each other apart for the Raw Women's Championship at Hell in a Cell. It's funny because the dynamic here is the veteran initially schooling the young champion because Charlotte started her wrestling career just a year prior to Ripley. However, when Ripley was working the independent scene, Charlotte was defeating Natalia for the NXT Women's Championship. So I'm going to say the intended story still makes sense. Ripley hits her finisher, but right next to the ropes so the queen is spared. 
Ripley is disqualified after throwing the announce desk thingy at Charlotte. No, seriously, what do you call that thing? It's a dumb DQ because we've seen people driven through the announce table without a penalty. It's another pro wrestling inconsistency. We just chalk it up to being the referee's discretion. Anywho, Ripley hits the riptide to walk away with the last laugh. Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville both agree that Rhea's actions at Hell in a Cell were unacceptable in that she got disqualified on purpose. This puts Charlotte in place for one more title opportunity. This is odd booking, it's hard to tell who the babyface is. I suppose both women are working heel and that's all there is to it. Before going straight to that match, it should be noted beforehand, Charlotte makes sure the champ won't be walking into their match at 100% if she's even able to walk at all. So at Money in the Bank, these women do the dance again. If there's one thing I like about a Charlotte match, it's that she works snug. She's not afraid to lay her stuff in. The fans are back, by the way. They troll with We Want Becky chants. The challenger starts setting up the champ for the finish. Even though Ripley survives a natural selection from the top, Charlotte makes sure she won't survive much else. Just like at WrestleMania 36, the Queen taps Ripley out and takes the championship. By the way, Nikki Cross is now Nikki A.S.H., which stands for almost a superhero. She wins the Money in the Bank briefcase on the same show. A Raw Women's Championship rematch takes place the next night on Raw. Charlotte's not having it. She gets herself disqualified. Rhea nails a riptide on the outside. Enter Nikki A.S.H. Cashing in her Money in the Bank contract, Charlotte is pinned and a new champion is crowned. Champion or not, Nikki remains an underdog. Charlotte ends up getting a clean non-title victory against her and then punishes Nikki. However, Nikki does best the Queen in a no-holds-barred match. As far as being able to beat Ripley, well, Charlotte interferes, causing a disqualification. They run the contest back and Ripley does succeed in a non-title pinfall over the champion. This will all culminate in a triple threat, but before the championship match, Ripley and Nikki tag against Nia Jax and Charlotte. It ends with the Queen once again Again, attaining a win over Ripley. This brings us to SummerSlam. Charlotte vs. Rhea Ripley vs. Nikki A.S.H. for the Raw Women's Championship. There's some solid enjoyable work here. In fact, I'll even say this is a hidden gem for I don't recall much fanfare pertaining to this match. It gets my vote for something worth checking out. Charlotte submits Nikki and the title changes hands. So where is Rhea Ripley to go from here? Well, nowhere near the Raw Women's Championship. This is where Ripley enters a cooling off period. She begins tagging with Nikki A.S.H someone who isn't over with fans. Regardless, this is part of Rhea's journey, whether I like it or not. The duo earn themselves a nice victory over Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Rhea follows through with a singles win over Baszler the following week. Rhea and Nikki run through the Women's Tag Team Champions Natalia and Tamina in a non-title match. They do the same with the titles on the line and there you have it. Rhea Ripley and Nikki A.S.H. become the Women's Tag Team Champions. This is a short-lived reign though. At Survivor Series, Ripley participates as part of Team Raw in a match against Team SmackDown. While she doesn't have a bad showing, Rhea finds herself eliminated at the hands of Shayna Baszler. Bianca Belair star continues to rise as she wins for her team. As far as the WWE Women's Tag Team titles, Carmella and Queen Zelina take them off Ripley and Nikki. When they fail to reclaim the gold, Nikki A.S.H. goes from hero to villain. Well, at least it's an unexpected twist since everyone predicted Rhea to turn. It's time for the 2022 Royal Rumble. This year, Ripley enters at number 16. Her eliminations include Queen Zelina and Carmella, Ivory, and oh, that's all this year? Not quite what we saw the year prior. As far as who eliminates Ripley, yup. The Queen once again stops Ripley in her tracks. Rhea Ripley finally gets her paws on Nikki A.S.H. one on one. The spunky little athlete shows some real tenacity. A riptide at around 8 minutes ends this. With WrestleMania coming up, it's time to get serious. A gauntlet match is held. The winner gets to enter last in the upcoming Elimination Chamber. Rhea Ripley and Nikki A.S.H. start things out. Ripley defeats Nikki, followed by Liv Morgan. She runs into a big problem with Dewdrop, but even better. 
tests her. However, Ripley's final challenge is Bianca Belair. Shades of NXT TakeOver Portland come through as Belair brings everything she has. This is a war. Ultimately, Bianca bests Ripley. Inside the Elimination Chamber, Ripley gets rid of Nikki. Bianca Belair makes sure Ripley doesn't win, though. Ripley's WrestleMania future isn't looking bright, but she will be getting a title opportunity for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Rhea and Liv Morgan form a tag team. And at WrestleMania, it's them versus Natalia and Shayna Baszler versus Carmella and Queen Zelina versus Naomi and Sasha Banks. Sasha pins Carmella. She and Naomi celebrate their win, but Ripley and Morgan do stay together as a tag team. In fact, the very next night on Raw, they challenge for the tag belts. After Naomi pins Liv Morgan, a distraught Rhea Ripley just isn't sure where to go from here. She's willing to give this tag team one more chance in pursuing tag gold. After Sasha pins Rhea, enough is enough. Ripley lets loose her frustration on her partner. Maybe it's time to stop with the niceties and remind the world just who Rhea Ripley is. At WrestleMania Backlash, Edge wrestles AJ Styles. A mysterious individual cloaked in black assists Edge in a win. That individual is none other than Rhea Ripley. Enter the Judgment Day. Rhea Ripley's WWE journey has led to her darkest path yet. No more indulging in mediocrity, it's beyond time that Rhea Ripley ascends to heights not yet seen, but it's a process. Liv Morgan is the first to discover just how brutal Rhea Ripley can be, and she keeps finding out. However, Liv isn't just steamrolled over. With Judgment Day ready to rule the Raw roster, there's one thing left for Rhea Ripley to take back. After aligning with Finn Balor and betraying the Judgment Day founder Edge, it's time for a fatal four-way that will set big things in motion. Rhea Ripley pins Dewdrop to become the number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship. Everything is in place for the Bianca Ripley rivalry to go to the next level. But in professional wrestling, things don't always go as planned. The characters we watch on television perform their own stunts, and at any given moment, their bodies can give out. Due to injury, the showdown with Bianca will have to wait, and so will Ripley's in ring participation. Luckily, she is only sidelined for four months. Rhea's on the verge of being more over than ever. There's two pieces of the puzzle left to get her there. At Clash at the Castle, Rey Mysterio and Edge wrestle Finn Balor and Damian Priest. After Edge pins Balor, something happens that not only enhances the presentation of the Judgment Day, but gives Rhea Ripley a foil to play off of, adding a layer of depth to her character. Dominic Mysterio joins the heel faction, and because of that, we finally see the birth of Mommy. That's one puzzle piece, but the other? It's in the hands of a woman who can be described as Ripley's greatest adversary, her final boss. And in October, Rhea is cleared for competition, and her first step toward her greatest showdown starts right back in NXT. Making her televised return to in-ring competition, Roxanne Perez is the first to experience what Rhea Ripley has in store for anyone standing in her way. As far as Bianca Belair is concerned, a one-on-one -on -one showdown with the EST will have to wait, which is fine. Ripley says she's the rock to her stone cold. When they finally clash in singles action, it can be a huge deal. That's not to say they don't interact at all, because Ripley and Bianca will be on opposite sides in the upcoming War Games match. To gain the War Games advantage, Rhea Ripley goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone she's plenty familiar with, the Empress of Tomorrow. Just like plenty of times prior, Rhea Ripley goes over Asuka. Anyway, on to War Games at Survivor Series. Bianca's team has a secret weapon, a true difference maker in the man, Becky Lynch, as revealed on SmackDown. Lynch and Rhea have a stare down within the steel structure, perhaps a foreshadowing of things to come in 2024. Rhea is compromised because of the mist of Asuka. Rhea is still a major force, but tonight it's about Becky Lynch. She pins Dakota Kai, giving her team the victory. Rhea Ripley takes on Asuka and Bayley in a triple threat. The winner of the match will find themselves in a number one contenders match for the Raw Women's Championship next week. Although Ripley isn't pinned, watching a huge opportunity slip through her fingers, 
fingers sets the nightmare off. Going forward, Ripley introduces everyone to her brutality with win after win after win. At the Royal Rumble, Rhea Ripley suffers a devastating spear from Beth Phoenix. This weakens Ripley for the Women's Rumble when she needs to be at 100% because she's entering at number one. The second entrant is Liv Morgan. This is going to be a long night. I mean, she's bloodied early on, and she revealed to Fightful that she dislocates her knee, so yeah. Her eliminations include B-Fab, Chelsea Green, Michelle McColl, Raquel Rodriguez, Asuka, and Liv Morgan. Lasting over an hour, Rhea Ripley has finally won a Royal Rumble. She's going to WrestleMania, and this time it's on her terms. First, there's a pit stop at the Elimination Chamber PLE, for both Beth Phoenix and Edge look to finish some business with the Judgment Day. Beth's a little too solid for Rhea to power through. Phoenix shows Mommy a thing or two about being an alpha female. Edge pins Finn Balor, but the Royal Rumble winner can afford a loss. Her destiny awaits. Charlotte Flair holds the SmackDown Women's title, and Ripley is looking to do to Charlotte at WrestleMania what the Queen did to her three years ago. Ripley gets her momentum going, picking up wins before the big match. It's WrestleMania 39 Night 1. Rhea brings her A-game, dripping with attitude. The fans get loud upon Charlotte's counter to the Riptide. The action here is too good to ignore. The physicality is something else. A performance exemplary of what you want to see at WrestleMania. A Riptide is hit, but this is the queen on the grandest stage. Charlotte gets a figure four. Ripley immediately gets to those ropes. She knows it's over if the champ transitions into a figure eight. With a super Riptide, a new SmackDown Women's Champion is crowned, Rhea Ripley, Queen Slayer. Getting the biggest win of her career, Rhea rules the rest of 2023 as a top Raw superstar. She's finally the industry headliner that many felt she was destined to be years ago. As far as whether Ripley should have gone over at WrestleMania 36, well, maybe. But would her WrestleMania 39 win have been as monumental had she not struggled to get there? I did my share of social media griping at the time, but in the end it worked out. Voted the top female talent of 2023 by PWI, ESPN, and ComicBook.com means Rhea Ripley's presentation is as good as it gets. Here's looking at 2024 and hoping for more great things for her. I'll end the video here because I feel the Charlotte victory was <clears throat> Rhea Ripley finishing her story. Well, if you made it to this point, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, take it easy and enjoy some pro wrestling.